Well, I'll mention anybody's name, Nina Jacobson, Sharon Lan Lansing, uh, I mean, you, name any one of those few, you know, women producers who had really powerful positions um, in the studios, and they did less. They hired fewer women directors than their male counterparts. Um, you know, the argument is that these women are marginalized themselves. You know, they're, you know, scrapping it out and trying to hold on to power, and they viewed female directors as, as a risk, as a, as a career hazard, in fact. And so they were less supportive. I, I think women, um, you know, uh, were, are, what can I say, guilty, you know, of, of, of the same um, conscious and unconscious uh, bias uh, against against women directors. I, I, we our our society, the United States of America, particularly, um, seems to view uh, the film director as as a, a male profession. Um, you know, the auteur director, that's like a masquile term. It's like auteur director can't be applied to a female. You know, there's, it, it's, auteur director is a male thing. And, and I don't think any female American director has ever been called an auteur director. I mean, maybe, you know, people might have called, you know, Lena Wertmuller or Agnes Varda or Jane Campion or Lena Wertmuller. I said Lena Wertmuller or uh, Lenny Riefenstahl, um, uh, you know, uh, an auteur director. These are European directors, but I don't think that in modern time, uh, the, the, you know, besides the early pioneer directors, I, I don't think that that term has ever been applied to an American uh, female director.